welcome to another Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, it is the 100th episode of Keel Hall Podcast. That's right. You are joining me today for the 100th episode, and while there's not a whole lot of news, there are some stories from myself, from you, as well as my top 10 things that I am grateful for for this last year for Sea of Thieves. So let's get into it. Come to join me, crew lad. Welcome aboard. That's right. Welcome to the crew because you all have been one of the biggest things that has been going on this year. So I wanted to start off with this 100th episode podcast, uh, just kind of going through the top 10 things that I wanted to be grateful for this year because this is the last remaining days of 2019. As we move into 2020, I just wanted to think about some of the things that we got this year that really made an impact for the Sea of Thieves community. Uh, last year or last episode, I talked about uh, things that I wanted to see brought to the game. This year, I wanted to think about the things that I was grateful for. So with the first one, and these are in no particular order, but I'm just going to start from the bottom of the list and work my way up. Uh, the bottom of the list, I wanted to thank banjos. We got uh, a new instrument this year season or this uh this year and i wanted to say that for a long time there has been a banjo player in the pirate legend tavern and it's something that we've wanted for a long time and finally we got the banjo late in the year it's Personally, it's my favorite instrument, uh, with a close second being the concertina, but I really enjoy just the sound that it makes. It's plucky, it's fun, it's upbeat, and it really is something to uh, enjoy when you kind of have a full man crew. You've got four instruments now that really kind of round out all of the the kind of symphonic m- music that you would get to play shanties on in like a galleon crew, and I really love that. It, it really brings to life some of the uh, the fun that can be had when you're just kind of playing around uh, and meeting other pirates sometimes or just hanging out on the ship. The second thing that I wanted to uh, go, so number nine, uh, that's going to be Tall Tales. Now, it, it seems like this is low, but there's other things that I thought were really impactful. But I wanted to bring up Tall Tales because this was something that was brought to us with the anniversary update, we finally got a real taste of some story in the Sea of Thieves world. I really love this. It's been developing characters and having different arcs for them as we've gone along and done these different tall tales. And it was really great to kind of sit back and uh, kind of experience a lot of the story that was uh, talked about in the Sea of Thieves Athena's Fortune book. We, we got that last October. Uh, we read through it and with the anniversary update kind of bringing that to life we got our first opportunity to venture out into the shores of gold and visit tribute peak and be able to see this ancient island that has all of this history to it that we still don't understand and deep deep within the bowels after a very uh, arduous journey of, of puzzle vaults and uh, uh, swinging swords or uh, like axes and all these different traps plus skeletons, we finally got to come face to face with the original gold hoarder Rathbone. And it was quite the fight. It was a long fight. It really, really tested to see how crews could manage it. And you were re- rewarded with a beautiful, beautiful kind of epilogue from the the, uh, the the pirate legend himself, Ramses. Uh, he came and he, and he talked about how much the Sea of Thieves is a living, growing place and how it's filled with lots of people with lots of ambitions. And while it may not always be about the gold, because you may not always get the gold, it's about the glory. It's about the story. It's about the experiences that you have as you got to do that. And I know from personal experience, the stories and feeling that I had when I got to go through that were exceptional. I love the different tall tales with the trap maker traps and his spyglass and taking a barrel down through traps to try and fight off waves of skeletons to unlock a key just to get a stone or suds on uh, the North Star Sea Post being able to cipher out his riddles uh, based around constellations and suss out all the different little things using uh, a wood plank that has a carving out of it that is 
uh, the keyholes for where you have to go to dig up uh, a treasure chest, all of the, the lovely stories behind the wild rose and the tales that they had that kind of took you along the story of these two lovers that were, were hunted down by, uh, by, pirate or by, by skeleton lords who were trying to stop them from being together. All of these different stories came together and you got so much more information from the journals and these tall tales about some of the life that has has been going on through Sea of Thieves and it introduced new characters to us with uh, Briggsies and Grey, Grey Morrow coming out of the pages of Athena Fortune, uh, Athena's Fortune and actually seeing them and what's happened to them and finding out that their whole story has an ending but it wasn't the ending that they probably anticipated and stopping them and bringing some peace to their souls uh, in some forms uh, as opposed to others was a, a wonderful experience. It was our first kind of boss battle or raid fight that we got in Sea of Thieves and while we've gotten the Seabound Soul since then, that has really kind of opened up a new story arc for the game. Uh, I'm looking forward to when we get some more of these deep dives into puzzles and uh, uh, different kind of escape rooms. You know, I, I'm looking forward to kind of working out the, the mysteries behind these, but I know they take a while and they spent a long time working on them. So I'm really looking forward to what Tall Tales is going to bring for us in the future because I think that it's going to be something that is really exceptional, something that really kind of helps bring more life and in, 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 uh, information about characters that we're, we're kind of working alongside of, but also some that still haven't been introduced. Uh, I'm looking forward to when we start kind of diving into the sea and understanding more about the myrrh and what they bring to Sea of Thieves and why it's just them helping us get back to ships for the moment. All of that is so wonderful to kind of uncover each time we get a new tall tale. And I'm looking forward to seeing just what holds in store for the second anniversary, because I feel like that's going to be the culmination of the story arc that we're just now starting. And once that hits, then we'll actually get this wide open uh, adventure that kind of brings out a lot more story and um, uh, tall tales to the to the seas. Next up on my list number eight i wanted to bring in the thought of pets uh especially with antonio um back when they did the the weekly update uh and, and the the uh, the the patch came out for pets uh they had a weekly stream and they brought a live monkey onto the stream and while there were some unfortunate events it made for some memorable moments and i i praise john for for sticking it through and being a a, a true proper professional when it comes to the the streams and he stuck through it you know it was it was pretty gross but it was great to see uh, a really memorable uh launch to pets and pets have been really awesome we it's our first kind of microtransaction that everyone has tended to to pick up uh they even gave one free uh during a twitch um kind of promotion where you got a purple monkey and the the different ones that we got during halloween where you actually got skeleton pets everyone seems to have have their own particular pet that they really love and uh, some of the names that I've seen have been awesome. Uh, a lot of people have been working to try and find ways around the naming check to see what kind of weird things that they can make up. So whether you're Jason Cross and you've got uh, Simon following you around uh, and Simon says I or your uh, partners with Chenzo and you name your pet Chenzo Beats Me. Uh, there's there's lots of funny things that people have done. I've personally named uh, my my purple parakeet, or no, my blue parakeet Sapphire uh, Gem. So it's, she's a Sapphire Gem, and everyone seems to have a, a really funny way of kind of putting their own twist onto pet names. Uh, and seeing them kind of around the world is nice because it adds a little more liveliness to a ship. And I can't wait to find out if we're going to be getting different pets because I know a lot of people, uh, myself included, are really looking forward to the idea of getting cats into the game, uh, especially with the Sea of Thieves, uh, the, the Tales from the Sea of Thieves book having um, trouble, the cat on the ship uh, that 
Captain Flameheart Jr. Uh, was captaining, and they kept the cat on there for, for rats, but for other reasons as well, and to see just how cats interact with the ship and how they wander around and do things. Um, I know a lot of people would probably like uh, other pets as well, and it'll be really great to see how those come about in the next year. So those are some of the things uh, with pets that I'm really happy for. I love the different kind of cosmetics. The Pirate Legend uh, cosmetics for pets was especially adorable. I really love those. Uh, and it's been nice to see that those have finally made it to game. This is something that uh, has been on the, the docket for Rare ever since the game launched. They had been wanting to bring pets to the game and it may have taken a, a you know about a year and a half or a little more than a year to get those into the game but they did it they're they're pretty well done i i really enjoy them and i'm looking forward to seeing just how those continue to be uh improved upon and added to in the in the next coming year number seven on my list i wanted to bring up was monthly updates when the game first launched uh they laid out a roadmap in may which gave us the idea of the uh, hungering deep then some weekly events, then curse sales, then more build rat updates, then forsaken shores, then more build rat updates, and then two more uh, uh, updates that they wanted to come out with by the end of the year. And I thought that that was pretty ambitious. Uh, I thought that that was uh, really, really big. They had picked up a, a fourth team to start working on updates and they had really kind of segregated out the content. And as we went into the second year, with the anniversary update, it was around June that a lot of us had completed most of the Tall Tale uh, content. Maybe not completely, but most of the people that had done Tall Tales since the update uh, had completed all of them at least once or twice and gotten cosmetics from them. And we kind of wondered, where would the next content update be? Like, where would it land? Because we didn't think that, or at least I didn't think that uh, E3, we would see anything new. And we didn't. We actually saw nothing at E3 2019 that indicated where Sea of Thieves uh, was going to go after the anniversary update. And what we found out was during that time, Rare had actually been prepping and working on how to deliver content on a monthly update. Uh, update uh, on a monthly cadence and we got that it happened in august september october november and december and leading into january we've received new content every month and it has varied from the second to the third week uh, we've we've seen a little bit of slip in that promise of uh, it releasing the second wednesday of every month and that's fine because i understand that some things need to be tested or some things uh, end up are uh, end up getting into the build and those are game breaking and while we deal with a lot of bugs in the game as it is if something needs something uh, if the build needs in a, a little more time another week to test out stuff just to make sure that a fix that's coming is actually uh, taken care of so that when it does come out it's not game breaking i'm fine with that and I understand that, you know, development on a monthly cadence can be tough if you don't have a good head start on that content. So I've been really appreciative of the of the updates. I think uh, some have been really great. Some have been OK. There's definitely room for improvement, but this is the first iteration. And for it being the first iteration of monthly cadence content from Rare, I'm happy to see that they have this uh, kind of under under uh, a tight wraps. You know, they've, they've managed to, to keep this going going fairly well and they've done a great job utilizing the insider builds to make sure that they are getting a larger test base uh, outside of their QA team and the, the the people at the team that just actually play it when they they want to uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next monthly updates are each each month they release new content and you try to get as much of that content done. And it's brought forth a lot of new stuff with the black market, with the black market archive, with different ways of uh, engaging in the world and different things to go looking for and a lot more stuff to go dig up. The one drawback that has come as a result of the monthly updates is trying to hang on to each of the free voyages from the bilge rats uh, and, and being able to pick up new voyages. Um, I have far too many voyages in my wheel right now and if if I could just be able to pick up a random 
normal voyage, whether it be like an Athena's fortune voyage or a gold hoarder or an order of souls voyage, I'd love to have that opportunity with, uh, while still keeping all of my monthly, uh, update voyages. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, moving into number five, collector's chests, rowboats, and storage crates. These have been some of the best things that have come to Sea of Thieves this last year. Starting with the collector's chests, uh, they are a great addition to the game and it gives players a chance to handle smaller sized items much easier than before. And we've finally been able to carry multiple items at once. And that's kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, it's a way for us to, to be able to decide that, you know, that skull or that trinket or that item is still worth picking up uh, because if you've got a collector's chest, then at least you can dump it into one of those. And when they first came out, it was kind of kind of touch and go because they came in with the anniversary update and people started losing them through a bug. They started disappearing whenever the, the chest, uh, they were placed in chests. And eventually that got worked out and we've been able to, to, to trust the reliability of those for a while. So I'm happy to say that collector's chests are a good addition to the game. I wish that they could hold more, but I understand how, you know, you place an item in there, it's a physical item, and you want to be able to easily access that outside of the way that you would normally access barrels or other things that, that have a, a completely different UI. The other thing I wanted to talk about was rowboats. Uh, rowboats aren't new to the game this year, but they were improved upon greatly with the addition of harpoons, as well as having a storage chest filled with supplies. And it's led people to find new places to try and drag these rowboats using harpoons. And I love that. I love the idea that harpoons have completely changed how we interact with ship fights. It's given us a way to dock with other uh, crews that are, are sailing around. You can grab the, the back of a ship and reel it in and actually have, a, have an opportunity to get closer and close in on them so you can have borders that can go in there and, and kill the pirates and, and guard the, the holes on a ship. And with the rowboats, having a harpoon on there has really helped in unsatisfying events where you get sunk by a kraken and a megalodon uh, while fighting a, a ghost galleon or a, a skelly galleon and you have a you have to pick up your treasure and having a harpoon on the rowboat helps kind of uh, give give you an opportunity plus it gives other people an opportunity to row uh, a, a rowboat to a ship and if the ship starts leaving you can at least harpoon it and reel yourself in to get a little bit closer and hopefully have an opportunity to dock your rowboat on the, the ship. And, you know, if you have powder kegs, you can either blow it up or maybe just get back to your crew who decided to leave you without letting you know. The other part of the number five that I wanted to go into, which really is something that I think could have been a lot higher on my list, is storage crates. Uh, storage crates are probably one of the most used things in the game that you can find in the world. I would gladly pay gold to a merchant at the start of a session for an empty storage crate, just, just so that it would be easier to grab all the supplies around the outpost. Having the opportunity to take one of these off to an island or off to a, a barrels of plenty to be able to restock them from like a, a shipwreck or just to snag one off of someone else's ship and find that there was a bunch of stuff in it has been a huge boon to the game and made getting supplies a lot easier. It's so much better than having to constantly fight with the limitation that's in place for combat purposes that you can only hold five pieces of food or five planks or 10 cannonballs. Having the opportunity to have something like a storage crate where you can drop off stuff in there, pick it up, move it somewhere else, unload a bunch of other barrels and stuff has really increased the, the ease of getting uh, uh, supplies when out and about. Now, that being said, I want to say that I still hope that Rare will change their minds and add purchasable crates with supplies to the game as a way of sinking gold. I would love to be able to buy cannonballs and planks and stuff right off the bat without necessarily needing to rely on finding a storage crate later on in the world and then filling it up wherever I'm at. 
Number four on the list I wanted to bring up was Fire. This is a relatively new addition. We've only had it for, uh, gosh, I think it came in two two updates ago. Yeah, I think it was November that we got the uh, the update. And this is funny because part of it had to do with uh, James Thomas, Big Sheep on uh, Twitter, who during a live stream, uh, during the weekly stream, happened to let slip that fire was his great his his happiest announcement and it was a little early on that but thanks to thomas uh we were er, we were james we were able to find out that fire was coming and the way that it came was so much better than what i originally anticipated uh when i first thought about fire i thought that we would be getting a new type of cursed cannonball and that the cursed cannonball would just be a red one similar to how the uh, purple ones are for ships and the, the green ones are for players i thought a red one would be an overall just fire one and you'd shoot it it would light a ship up and that would be it but we actually got something even better. We got grenades, and these are amazing. They're great for when you're getting close to a ship and you want to try and prevent someone from being able to anticipate you jumping on, on board their ship. You lob a, lob a couple of these uh, onto their deck, and they immediately have to retaliate. They immediately have to decide what they're going to do. They're either going to fight through it or they're going to have to back out and uh, get some water on them or they're going to have to actually eat through the uh, eat through the damage. But regardless, it helps give you a little bit of an edge on boarding. Uh, it's also nice to know that these are something that will help out with PvP or excuse me, PvE. Um, I haven't done this a lot because I don't think about it that much. But firebombs are great against skeleton captains and skeletons that are summoned. You can toss a couple of these on them and fight them. And while they may still get you uh, uh, on fire, it's nice to know that they're going to be taking damage. And this is kind of a way to help actually chew through some of the damage. Because as it is now, everyone kind of has an idea of how much health or how much damage you have to deal to be able to kill pirate. You know, you have to get five swings with a sword or you have to get a sniper shot and then a couple swipes with the sword or you have to get a full blundy shot or two pistol or a flintlock pistol shots but adding fire to it helps kind of whittle that down so if you've got someone uh, on fire and they've taken enough damage a sniper shot placed high say if you're in the crow's nest with an ammo crate and your last name is neat then you can have a really good time lobbing fire bombs off of the crow's nest onto a deck and sniping people and taking them out without having to to reload to get a second shot in it's it's beautiful it's it's it looks great it was really well implemented and i love the idea that fire even even from something like something burning on the the uh the the stove can sink a ship while while it may take a long time, it's still something that you can do. And they even added a little bit of a twist to the campfires where you have to use a piece of wood in your lantern to actually light a campfire on the islands now, just to if you wanted to cook something. And I like that little bit of, of realism that they added to the game instead of just these constant burning fires with uh, without any kind of need for wood. They just constantly burn magically. The third thing on my list, actually, yeah, no, third thing? I can't remember which one I'm on. I think I'm on three, three or four. We'll go four. Uh, actually, I can't even remember. doesn't matter. Next thing on the list is the charity sales microtransactions. Microtransactions for liveries where the proceeds go to charity. Um, a long time ago, I had an idea back when Rare was early talking, talking early about microtransactions for cosmetics. I wanted to have something where I could purchase liveries for real money and have those proceeds uh, go to a charity. Now, my charity, of co course, was Breast Cancer Awareness because I think it's a, a great cause. There's a lot of push for it, and I think it's uh, I think it's an easy one that people could rally behind. The one that came out, though, was probably one that made more sense uh, with Rare. Rare has been close with a UK-based special effects charity who have been working really hard to make sure that they bring accessibility to players so that they can continue to play games just like anyone else. 
I really love this charity. It was it was a great thing for them to to bring this alongside just because of how close they had been working with them in the past and how they had been bringing in uh, members of special effect to talk about uh, bringing accessibility options to Sea of Thieves to make it easier for people to be able to play. And as a result of that for that that partnership, they have actually added some of the uh, some of the the reduced to hold features in accessibility that I think most pirates nowadays actually use and prefer compared to the traditional way that we used to play the game and without that partnership without that that relationship we wouldn't have been able to uh, have these sales uh, come so quickly um, it was nice to be able to buy them I love the design of them for as simple as they are it speaks to anyone that sees them that one of the people on that ship is a kind heart regardless of the bloodthirsty nature and uh, uh, desire to, to murder. They wanted to be able to buy that sale just to be able to support special effect uh, because it wasn't something that was as flashy as say like the the gold reapers uh, or the gold skull and crossbones um, sales that we got the jolly rogers that we got earlier on and i love that because it, it speaks to how this community is willing to support more than just the the company themselves but other charities as a result of cosmetics in this game next thing on the list i wanted to bring up which i believe is actually the third one uh is the maiden's voyage this oh man where to where to begin the maiden's voyage uh gave new players a tailored experience that finally gives a base understanding of the story about Sea of Thieves. It gives you a chance to play on an island for as long as you want, free of the worries that you would normally have when starting up in a server for your first time. No longer do you have to worry about having a ship sail up to your docked uh, fresh uh, spawn and sink it and then go up to the tavern and murder you and completely ruin your, your first initial experience with the game because you just didn't know you were just getting used to stuff a lot of how this game is is um played is through experience by people explaining how to do stuff and it was something that i believe jason cross on on the stream recently mentioned how uh they had actually um remembered better that you could Put your compass up to your face and hear the footsteps as you were walking instead of seeing a tooltip and reading it and then hopefully not forgetting what that what that tooltip said when it was important and to have the maiden voyage it's it's kind of a cheat in this instance where you're getting experience and, and they're explaining how to do stuff, but it's in a very free form way. The the pirate lord greets you and you get your first glimpse of some of the, the mysticism that comes with Sea of Thieves. And he gives you his old stuff. And you actually find out that that island is just outside of the Sea of Thieves. It's just outside the Devil's Shroud. And he actually opens up the shroud somehow and manages to to get you to sail out and you get a sword and you battle a skeleton and you uh, you wander around a shipwreck that's on this island there's beautiful waterfalls and there's hidden secrets everywhere on the island and you can you can play there you can find out is this what's what's for me and the culmination of that is you sailing through a guided uh, uh voyage through the shroud where you get a really good introduction at all of the different types of sea-based uh, fights that you could come across in Sea of Thieves. You see a megalodon, you see a, 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 um, a skeleton ship, and you see the kraken eat the skeleton ship. And it's amazing because it's it's like being on the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, a tour, or it's a, the 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 actual ride at Disneyland. It's it's amazing to be able to kind of sail around through that. Now you're kind of passive because it doesn't matter so much what you do to to the stuff that's going on, but you get to see this kind of tailored scripted experience and and it's a it's a just a wonderful way to kind of introduce you into the game and and it sets you off by sailing into the um the ancient isles and you sail up towards uh thieves haven uh i kind of wish that there was a way for you to be able to 
jump straight into a server instead of being kicked out back to the menu where you have to start a fresh game. But for anyone that's just trying to get an understanding of, of how to play the game or how to do stuff without necessarily having to worry about any threats, it's a great way to, to, to experience all the, the different things that can be popping up in Sea of Thieves. And the second thing uh, on my list, number two, um, I wanted to thank the dev team for constantly coming out with content, stuff that I can latch onto, information, news, um, updates, things like that, that will help kind of let me build out this podcast. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really the, the, the main one that I feel like has been doing the podcast. I've been doing it since before the game came out. It's a hundred episodes long now. And I honestly don't think if Rare was the company that that does what they do to constantly do weekly dev updates to constantly have streams available to have very active social media if this were any other company say like retro studios there's no way i could possibly build a podcast especially a solo based podcast around the idea of talking about this game that even though with the up uh, the monthly updates there's always something i can refer to that is less than a week old uh with sea of thieves and i love that because the the dev team especially joe neat is committed to having something for the players on a weekly uh a weekly cadence it may not always be big news but he's always addressing concerns and i've constantly see I, I still see to this day i still see people on twitter talk about how the devs don't listen and that's just not true they constantly listen they're constantly having meetings about um what's going on in the community and if you don't believe me listen to the last bonus episode that i had where i talked with cameron thomas who is one of the community managers at rare and he talks about his daily uh daily going ons at rare where they have people constantly looking at forums and discord and twitter and instagram and reddit and all these different places where the players are just to make sure that they are aware of the different things that are coming to the game uh, that the players are experiencing that we want to either share the news or uh, express our frustrations or talk about possible things in the future and all of that all of that is stuff that if this company was any other company i don't think that it would have been possible for me to continue making the podcast as well as i i can thanks to all of their news all of their information All right, pirates, and the number one thing on my list that I am grateful for with Sea of Thieves is you. It is you, the listeners, and the community. If not for you, while <laughs> I would probably still be making the podcast, I, I'm going to be honest there, because I, I just enjoy actually talking about the game on my own. But it's made so much better because of you, because you're listening, whether you've joined the Discord and started sailing with other members, or you hit me up on Twitter, or you send me an email, or you reach out to me anywhere that you normally do. All of those things culminate into one amazing community that has developed around the Keel Hauled podcast. And while I know I am far from any of the biggest uh, communities out there, it is still something that is really precious to me. It's something that I cherish all the time. And I'm constantly trying to think of how the podcast, how the community, how the Discord, all of that can be made better uh, with each month. And I gotta say, it's it it warms me every time I see it. it's it's something where I think I've actually I've grown so much this year. And it's so nice to see so many new people still reaching out to me on a regular basis that they love the podcast. And that, may, that makes so much difference in the world. 
if if <laughs> there are so many other podcasts that came and went uh, with Sea of Thieves, many of them dropped off because they had other stuff they wanted to do or they fell out of love with the game. And I just I can't see that happening with Sea of Thieves. And so much of that is because I feel like I have this awesome commitment to you, to the listener, to, to consistently try to keep you up to date with all of the going ons in, in the game and with each update and try and offer as much information and news and stories that I can with you. So thank you, especially, I mean, we even had, we even had a get together at XO19 in London. There was three members of the Discord who met up, who were repping Sea of Thieves with the, the Keel Hauled podcast shirts. And it, it was such a, it was, it, it, it almost brought me to tears just thinking about it because it was such an amazing thing to, to see that, you know, like almost two years ago, I started this thing because I didn't have anyone to talk with for the game. And I just wanted to talk with someone about it. And I didn't have that opportunity. And it, it was because I made the podcast that I was able to start building a community of other pirates from around the world. And I do mean from around the world uh, who started joining in and hanging out and chatting with me and spending time. And I've made a lot of really good friends uh, over the last last couple of years or the, the last 100 episodes. And it's, it's meant a lot that, that you, you guys listen. Uh, whether whether you you do it right away or whether you do it all in one shot or you know you just picked it up and this is the the first one that you listen to, I want you all to know how much it means to me that you have have that you that you even listen whether whether you've ever talked to me or not. Uh, just the fact that you listen that means the world to me because you know I see the downloads and I see I see the listening and stuff and. You're out there. You're out there whether I know it or not. And it it's so great to see. And I love you for that. I really do. All right, Pirates. Well, that was, uh, that was, it was getting kind of emotional there, but that was the top 10 uh, things that I'm grateful for, for this last year. And it, you know, as, as much as I love this game, as much as I love the developers and the community around it, there was something that happened uh, last week that I think we all kind of had some mixed reactions to it, and it would be it would be bad of me to ignore it because you know it's one of those things where while I love this game, it's not without its flaws, and this comes down to Rare being a company that this is their first game as a service, and they are still learning as much as we are what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. So I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. So let's start off with the bad news. Um, the bad news is that on December 25th, uh, or actually I believe it was a week ago, um, so on the 23rd, a lot of us got an email. Some of you may not have, and that may be something that's on your part as far as like your account having the proper email address or it getting kicked to your spam folder. But as far as I know, uh, anyone that had a valid email address attached to their Sea of Thieves Microsoft account got an email from Sea of Thieves letting you know that you got a gift. And that gift was not the same gift for everyone, unfortunately. Someone... Someone did some something somewhere and decided that there was going to be a range of gifts from one to four. The best one was 750 ancient coins, which is seven and a half USD dollars. It's a it's a pretty good deal. You know, you, you get a pretty good deal. Another one is 500 coins. Not as good, but pretty good still. 500 coins, that's a pet. The low end uh, was 250 coins. And while it wasn't a whole lot, you could buy something for uh, yourself, a couple emotes here and there, something that you'd like that maybe you just need a little bit more ancient coins to be able to get. And then there was the sad part, uh, the sad thing that that people got. And that was the new hide emote. Uh, And I can't speak personally to this because I didn't receive this gift. Um, but some people and a fair, fair amount of them on Twitter, uh, 
received a, a Heidi moat basically it's one of the Heidi moats that's available through the uh, through the the pirate emporium and some people say that it was the free one that you could have gotten earlier I don't know if that's the case uh, it seemed like it was uh, the one that you hide behind the pillar and it's unfortunate because uh, it seems like this was intended through some replies on Twitter. It seems like it was intentional that there was going to be a variation on the different gifts that were given and that some people got gifts uh, or, or received gifts that they already owned uh, because this came in, in the third week of December, many of us have already purchased most of the stuff from the Pirate Emporium that we were planning on. And because of that, unfortunately, we might have already owned the emote and there was no refund uh, offered for that. Um, it's unfortunate because you, you hope that something like this could have just been, it could have been an easy statement. They could have said, all right, everyone gets 500 coins and the 500 coins is enough to get you a pet. So if you got the Twitch monkey, uh, which is a weird thing to say now that I think about it, but if you got the purple Twitch monkey, then you got a monkey, but say you wanted a, a parrot. Well, 500 coins would have gotten you a parrot and it would have been a nice way to kind of round out the the end of the year. Uh, and whilst I did get 500 coins, I gladly would have traded those to someone if I could who got an emote because I didn't necessarily need the coins. I, I'm willing to spend the money if I can. And it it was kind of a shame. It was a, a, a little bit of a misstep by Rare. And I feel like this is a learning experience for them. I don't think that they'll do this again without just making it an even statement across the board. Um, it's been very quiet on Sea of Thieves' end uh, regarding this. Rare has not talked uh, too much about why this went down the way it went down. But I'm happy for the people that got the, the high end, the 750 and everyone that got coins. I'm happy that you got coins. I'm sorry for everyone that got an emote. I, I really hope that something comes as a result of that, but I don't know that that's going to be the case because it felt like it was kind of random. Um, so sad news. Obviously, I, I hate to bring this up um, after talking about the things that I'm grateful for, but... I felt like if I didn't mention it, it would be, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to pretend like this was getting swept under the rug because it's not, it's an important thing that I think rare needs to hear from everyone that getting an emote when everyone else gets, you know, 250, 500, 750 coins, that's something that everyone should just get it equally. It shouldn't be something that's an arbitrary decision for everyone. And I'm, I'm kind of bummed about that. But again, I love that they did it. And I'm hoping that something in the future is done to make sure that everyone gets equal treatment in the future. Um, the good news that I wanted to talk about was the calendar of giving. The calendar of giving was great this year. It was awesome to see uh, all the double reputation and double doubloons that went out over the course of the 12 days. Uh, actually, it was a little bit longer than 12 days. I think it was 15 because you had a few days on the last day to continue earning that w double reputation for anything you turned in including Athena's. And it helped a lot of people get to Pirate of Legend, uh, Athena 10 reputation. It helped a lot of people in Arena and Hunter's Call. The interesting thing that I thought uh, was, was kind of weird about that is while we did get a lot of gilded voyages, we did not get a gilded Athena's, something that was available for Pirate Legends last year. In fact, it was the main reason why some people actually jumped into the game was because they had received it and they had immediately gotten um, uh, someone on a voyage who had a really, really good gilded voyage, something from the Order of Souls or the Gold Hoarders. They got a good start off onto the game. And I've been seeing a lot of fresh pirates come, but we didn't see a gilded voyage. And I was kind of curious about why that was. So uh, while I was watching the, the VOD for last week's uh, weekly stream, I noticed that John had been asked, uh, because he has actually been holding on to his gilded Athena voyage for a year. 
And the question was raised whether or not that would be coming because it didn't seem like it was because it's basically not in the game. And just from what I could gl glimpse, uh, or not glimpse, but from what I could get from the, the weekly stream, it sounds like this week we should be getting a Gilded Voyage. And hopefully it's just like last year. Hopefully it's one that will give everyone uh, the opportunity to pick one, whether it's Cargo or it's uh, Athena's or Gold Hoarders or Order of Souls, any of those to allow us the opportunity to go out and get a really good cache of treasure uh, to be able to afford some of the new cosmetics because we still have uh, till the second Wednesday of January to get anything that's in the uh, black market uh, or the Pirate Emporium now. So for that, I'm, I'm grateful for if that happens, that'll be really, really good news. I think a lot of pirates are going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I know I still love going out and sailing with my um, my crew who, well, not my crew, but the crew that I sail with, uh, going out and sinking ships and taking treasure. And that actually happened yesterday. And man, was it awesome. Uh, I got to go out with um, Team Chicken, SBS, and Gets Me a Beer, who are two of the three gents that I tend to play with uh, late at night when I get home from work. They happen to be on, and I usually jump on if possible. And we got the opportunity to jump on a brig. I'd, I'd been stalking a brig for a while, and I just spawned onto a server while they were closing out their dealings with a sloop, and they were going to join on the brig. And I noticed that there were two Reaper's chests available, one out in the roar, way out in the middle of nowhere, and then one just south of Salt's Atoll, Old Salt's Atoll. So I gathered as, many, uh, as much supplies off of Sanctuary Outpost as I could, and I started sail. I headed out towards south, and they jumped on fairly, recent, or fa fairly shortly after that. Now, on our way there, we noticed two brigs. One was sailing north, and one was sailing towards the Reaper's chest. But as we started getting closer to uh, Lost Gold Fort and Plunder Valley, we noticed that they had turned and were starting to head away. And we figured, all right, well, they obviously don't want to engage with us and we'll get a free Reaper's chest out of it. So as we were sailing by Sharkbait Cove, we noticed that the shipwreck uh, was, was um, or that there was a sapphire statue on Sharkbait Cove. So we went out to the shipwreck. We got some supplies. It was pretty light for a shipwreck, so we didn't get a whole lot out of it, but we did get the Reaper's chest. And as we started to head north back up towards that sapphire mermaid statue on Sharkbait Cove, Cove, one of our crew noticed that the brigantine that would had originally headed towards the reaper's chest had now come back and were looking to engage us. So they sailed around behind us and we were prepared because we had saw that they were coming and unloaded quite a lot of cannonballs into their brawn, or into their, their starboard. And while they sailed off at full steam, we started to drop sails and we started going into this elegant dance uh, that you tend to do where you know your hard hard turn port or hard turn starboard and you're just into the wind and you're just trying to get good shots off or good boards and they had a couple pirates who preferred to board our ship. They would typically shoot off and try and land on our ship or, or climb on ship and drop our anchor so that the captain on their ship would be able to come about and start landing uh, shots into our hull while they defended them. Not not too uncommon of a tactic. Uh, it tends to work out fairly well if you can get the anchor dropped because then you can really kind of uh, get someone sitting there uh, like a lame duck in water and take them out. And we figured, you know, that that was their strategy. We were going to keep going off and uh, trying to board them as well. And after a lot of trades, uh, they got some good shots on us. We got some good shots on them. And they boarded us a few times and we boarded them. We managed to get their anchor dropped and we lit into them. Uh, but this was after they had sent two of their crew um, in onto our ship because they had managed to uh, come at us and actually uh, t-bone us and as they t-boned us two of their guys the ones that like to board jumped on and tried to drop our anchor and we defended our ship uh, we managed to catch the anchor and their ship was uh, trailing behind us so gets me a beer and myself saw the opportunity we had just killed two of their guys they had been sent to the ferry and that meant there was only one left on their ship and their ship was sailing directly behind us so both of us without a word jumped off and climbed onto their ship uh, we managed to drop their anchor and killed the captain 
while our third, Team Chicken, managed to, or as I affectionately call him, Cannonball Chris, uh, turned the ship and brought it around so that he could start laying into the hull. And man, he did. Uh, while Gets Me a Beer and myself killed the, the captain and anyone else who spawned, we defended with our dear lives as much as we possibly could. We ate as much fruit from their barrels as we could to try and stay alive to make sure that we could sink their ship. And when we sunk their ship, not only did we get a harpoon rowboat, not only did we get to keep our reaper's chest, but come to find out these guys had been sailing for a long time. How long, I can't tell you because obviously we had just spawned into the server and didn't have a whole lot going on our, on our ship. We didn't have a lot of supplies. But when all of that glittering treasure rose from the seas, from their shipwreck, it was a beautiful sight. They had collector's chests filled with trinkets. They had chests. They had grog chests. They had reaper's chests. They had skulls. It was amazing. I think we probably grabbed at least 20 to 30k just off of their ship alone. And this was within the first 15 minutes of us getting onto the server. We got a bunch of foul bounty skulls, which is kind of a tradition on our ship. When we get foul bounty skulls, we put them next to the helm, uh, and they're affectionately called Rodneys. But in this case, we actually named them uh, for each of the three crew members because Gets Me a Beer has a habit of checking the gamer tags in the recent played list to see if they're still on the server to see whether or not they're still online. And when he checked this time, he found out that not only have we sunk them and sunk their treasure and gotten their treasure, but we sunk their hopes as well. And we managed to get them to leave the server right off the bat. It was such a great feeling. And we did that numerous times throughout the night. We found other ships that came and tried to take us out and we hastily uh, killed them, sunk their ship. In fact, there was actually a really good battle uh, with a skeleton galleon as we were heading towards a sloop who was being attacked by a skeleton sloop. We sunk our galleon and chased down the sloop who was fighting off the skeleton galleon or the skeleton sloop. And that, skele that sloop actually started heading towards Ancient Spire Outpost where there was a fresh galleon or a fresh brigantine that had just spawned there. And he parked right up next to the, uh, the, the brigantine. And I'm not sure what happened because the brigantine eventually uh, raised anchor and left left as the skeleton sloop started attacking the, the brigantine. And we sank the sloop, we took its treasure, and then we sank the brigantine and the sloop and took all of their treasure as well. Uh, it was amazing. It was a really good night. We got a lot accomplished and a lot of stuff turned in throughout that night. Uh, I think we grabbed four reaper's chests by the end of the night. So quite a bit of stuff. In fact, I think gets me beers up to 9,000 doubloons right now, which is absolutely insane because he has millions of gold uh, and doesn't actually need it. But he's, he's just one of those pirates who whenever they get on a server, they just go killing people and stealing their treasure because to be perfectly honest, if you're good at PVP, that's the fastest way to make gold is to just take it from those generous people. So I'm grateful again for the, the folks that I sail with because every time I get onto the seas with them, I have a good time. And this game constantly, consistently produces awesome moments for me to think about and to look forward to every time I go to set sail with a crew. Next up on today's docket, it is time for a first mate's log. Now I'm going to jump into this one and I'm going to see if I can do something to help kind of make it just a little more fun. So I hope you enjoy and I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> Here it goes. First mate's log. Herein lies an excerpt of an adventure had by Mr. Winslow and Mr. Haynes in service of the Build Rats and Stitcher Jim. Sloop to the northwest. Your advice, Mr. Haynes. I asked. We've a chest due to Mr. James, and lack the key to reveal its prize? Forward to Crooked Mast. Should they inquire, we'll reply directly. Aye, I responded. Onward to the vile isle. I waved congenially a pair of festively dressed brothers of the sea as they passed, and we continued on. As they passed, perhaps grinning a bit mischievously toward me, I heard the telltale clatter and subsequent groan of their anchor. This was followed with a hiss and a thunk that made me certain they'd successfully attached their harpoon to our stern side. 
as I willed our ship sail to swallow the wind, one of our neatly dressed friends had somehow gained our ladder, just that quickly, and then purchase to our bridge. The pepper shot of my trusty blunderbuss did little to deter him as he anticipated my defense and suffered the sting of but a few pellets. The thief then secured the chest intended for Mr. James and turned to find the slash of Mr. Haynes' cutlass, which sent him hurtling into the drink. He has the chest, I exclaimed, as I saw him dog paddling inadvisably in these wild waters, which teemed with hungry sharks, looking for a salty meal. He had, in the struggle, survived and was making good his escape. Swing us about. Take it to them, Mr. Windsor. Mr. Haynes said before jumping off from relative safety of our bridge into the sea after the bold thief. Through luck or blessed by the fortune of Athena herself, the harpoon had snapped, and the sloop of our foes was amidst the chop and rocky shore of the crooked mast. Freed of their claws of their harpoon, I swung about per Mr. Haynes' advice, and treated them to a gift of our cannons, opening their hull in at least five places. I'd adjusted our sails, raising them by half to keep us in a slow leftward circle. Through my spyglass, I spotted the thief with our chest approaching his listing sloop. Fighting hard to continue paddling in the punishing waves, no doubt the injury sustained in his brave folly about our boat slowed his progress. But ho, oh, ahead of him, by perhaps ten meters, was the persistent Mr. Haynes. At the ladder of the enemy sloop, as a bucket of water was thrown from the deck of that sloop by the only crew member left aboard to keep it afloat. I watched Mr. Haynes approach that man and dispatch him at close range with his flintlock. One more for the ferryman, I thought. At this point, I was coming into range again and prepared our cannon with flaming munitions. I was close enough to see our thief board his ship with our prize. Alarmed at the state of his boat, he dropped the chest on their bridge and scurried below deck to make a desperate attempt at repairs. Mr. Haynes watched it all curiously, apparently unseen in the chaos, and shrugged. He then secured our chest, Mr. James Ashen Prize, and dove into the water once more. I straightened the wheel and put our ebon sheet into the wind. As I sped by the sunken wreck of our enemies, Mr. Haynes deftly grabbed our sloop's ladder and propelled himself onto the bridge. You, sir, are a legend, I said to him. Mr. Haynes waited a moment and then laughed as if it was all a bit of nothing. Mr. Windsor, he said, clapping me about the shoulders, let us secure a key that we might open this chest. Then, perhaps, we'll let old Jimmy buy what remains once we've lined our pockets. This, and admittedly dramatic retelling, is nevertheless the true tale of the daring deeds of Mr. Haynes, crewmate to Mr. Windsor, and the pirate of Sea of Thieves. Thank you so much for your story. I hope I did it justice. I hope it sounded good and that you enjoy this 100th episode. If you want to get a hold of me, there are plenty of ways to do that. You can always reach me on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. You can always send an email with your story in at C-A-P-T L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. You can always join the Discord as well. Uh, venture in there and talk with some people. And if you just want to sail with others um, or, or message me through Xbox, you can always reach me at my gamer tag C A P T A I N L O G U N and pirates with that I think it's time. All right, pirates, that's going to do it for this episode of Keel Halt, the 100th episode of Keel Halt. Now, bear in mind, while we may not have a lot of news going on right now, I would urge you to please go listen to that interview with Cameron Thomas. It meant a lot to me that he joined up. And there's going to be another surprise coming later on in the new year to celebrate the second anniversary of Keel Halt being out. So, Keep in mind, uh, there's going to be new content coming the second or third weekend of January, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Uh, 
I really, really just have to say, I appreciate you all so much. Uh, it means a lot to me to be able to, to complete in the 100th episode. When I started this, I added little zeros in the number of podcasts that I made. Each episode had three zeros because there was one day I anticipated I would need that placeholder and I didn't want to have to rename all my files. So having the opportunity to finally put 100 episodes in the books has been a joy and it wouldn't it wouldn't be nearly as sweet of a of a satisfying victory if it wasn't for the community for rare for sea of thieves for everything that has come about and i can't wait to dive into more lore more story more pirating and to use shore leave as a, a way to kind of talk about other stuff going on in the world uh it's it's great to have an outlet within the podcast so you still get to enjoy it without necessarily needing to hop over to another podcast um i have grand plans for the future and i can't wait to see what 2020 brings for us in the future with that pirates thank you i love you and i look forward to sailing with you on the sea of thieves